Hello everybody, this is Andy in the bass room. Recently, Julia and I did a video on what is groove and we couldn't quite define it. We just said it was a feeling. And I said, I would love to talk to Adam Neely and he could define what it was and explain in more musical terms. Well, guess what? Here is Adam Neely and Julia. <laughs> How's it going Ooh. everybody? My name Hi. is Adam Neely. Just Adam Neely, not Adam Neely and Julia. And this is Julia. <laughs> Uh, so I have a lot of thoughts on like what groove is, but before like giving my two cents on it, do you mind, um, we're just talking about like the Viennese style, right? Which yeah. to me, not really coming from that tradition, it sounds like the second beat is delayed a little bit. Yeah, right, um, right. I know it's gonna be stupid, but do you mind like giving that example like with a metronome right now? Okay, sort okay. Of. I'll, I'll just sort of like, is this like one, two, three, one, two? A little bit slow, slower. Slower, slower, slower. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's like that you can dance to. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, one, two, three. One, one two, three. So to me, like it's what you're doing is like you're really leaning into that first beat. It sounds like you're putting a lot of emphasis, not just rhythmically, but also dynamically. Yeah. So right. it's more than just the the combination of timing, at least for me, just in terms of creating a groove. Or is that how you're thinking about it? Or yes, yeah. Okay. Right. So there's this term that I love, and the term is micro rhythm. And microrhythm is this thing that a lot of academics use to describe the very slight variations of timing. So it's not just like quarter note, quarter note, quarter note. It's typically this quarter note occurs slightly ahead of the beat or slightly mm -hmm. behind the beat. Okay. And they use this term to describe all these slight variations. So the microrhythm of a Viennese waltz has a particular sort of they call it inner onset interval, when the pulse actually attacks versus when the beat yeah. actually is. And you can measure that, but you can't really notate it very well. Because when you notate it, like we don't have a system for that. Yes. But you can like listen to it. Like, you know. Is it like the same thing with playing after the beat? Like, like uh, leaning backwards? Yeah, yeah. Very, very similar. Like, um, you know, it, like, a lot of time in like, especially like gospel ba bass players, they'll do these like crazy fills where they'll be like, ahead of the beats, like really like ahead of beat and then come really behind the beat, but they're always aware of where the beat Where the beat is. Actually is, yeah. Okay. And you know, if you were to notate it, it would still be all eighth notes or still all sixteenth notes, but the actual feeling of it is comes from that precise mathematical relationship to that like metronomic yeah. beat. Yes. Um, there's, uh, do you know Nawa music? Oh no. By any chance? I, no, so no. Nawa music is the style of music from Morocco. And to me, it actually sounds very similar to the Viennese waltz okay, well. because it's it's in three, and it's also very like wonky three. Like it doesn't actually. It's not the one, two, three, one. And there's like this very particular feeling that's um, created from like a very odd relationship between each one of the pulses. So the micro rhythm of Nawa music from Morocco, to me anyway, sounds very similar to like Viennese music, um, and it, it all comes from that idea that the musicians have very carefully fine-tuned their inner clock to know, okay, I need to push this mm -hmm. beat. I need to push it this direction or pull it this direction. Yeah. Um, and I feel like there's a micro-rhythm for like every style of music. There's a very particular kind of push and pull for each one of them. And you guys were talking earlier like, uh, it's a feeling that you get? Is yeah. that what, like, what's your, yes. what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Yeah, when you play a groove, like a groove, yeah, it's yeah. kind of a feeling I always have the drummer in my mind. Mm, yeah. And I try to imagine to play to, to the drummer and feel where my beat is. And I think when you listen to a lot of music, you get to know that feeling um, by the time. So... Do you feel like you need to do it, like you need to actually practice that feeling like with that in mind in order to get into it or is it just listening to it all the time? It's listening but I have to, when I want to play it, I really have to get it into my fingers. Sometimes yeah. it's my head but I can do it or play it with the instrument. So you say get it into your fingers, meaning yeah. physically do it. Physically yeah. doing it. Yeah. So I've always found that too, is like you have to, there has to be an embodied aspect of the rhythm. Like you can't just think about it, you can't just like yeah. listen to it. Like, oh yeah, that's like, 
17 against 24, which is a ridiculous polyrhythm, but you have to actually physically do it in order for it to make sense and give you that feeling. And there's this really interesting debate right now going on about whether or not rhythm, like your perception of rhythm happens in your head or if it happens in your body. Meaning like um, scientists, when they're studying the brain, neuroscientists have been trying to find the point of beat detection for so long, which is like, where in the brain do we hear rhythm? Like where, like what's the part of the brain which perceives rhythm? Because we already know what part of the brain perceives like language, what part of the brain perceives like light. We don't know what part of the brain perceives rhythm. And like, we've never really been able to like lock that down. And so the going theory right now is that it's your body. It's basically movement of the body, which perceives rhythm. It's a kinesthetic sense. It's an emergent property from like movements. And so when you said, I need to get in my fingers, I'm like, well, yeah, to get that feeling, you need to get the feeling of moving your fingers like that. You can't just automatically know what it is. Yeah. And it's my body too. When I play, I'm like, right. The beat is always in in my body. body. And that was something that I've only been learning like recently is like, I need to move my body as I'm playing. For the longest time, I was just... No, I can't do this. <laughs> and, you know, my rhythm has improved so much now that I'm just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, was, for a while I thought it was like, oh, I don't need to do that. That's like, that's extraneous. That's like people putting on a show. That's like not actually like what it is. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's just so much better now that like I've unlocked that. And when you say groove is a feeling, like it's physically a feeling like in your body. Yes. So like that micro rhythm of making sure to move it like forward or backward really comes from the movement of the body because you're not always moving strictly metronomically. It's like a lot more, yeah, coming from the body. But I think you can train this because a (laughs) lot of children can clap from one to four really in a, in, in the bar or in the measure. Yeah. Yeah. And you really can train this to get used to that feeling, I think. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you can train anything. I mean, we're all human. Like, it doesn't really, you know, we come from different cultures. There's so many different kinds of styles of music, but we can always, like, get into that feeling. It does take a while, though, when you're not used to it. Um, When, like, I always feel like we can, like, we never, we never talk all that much with dancers. Have you ever, like, worked with dancers at all or, like, played bass behind... No. Yeah. No. I mean, I've done it a couple times, but like, it's a very strange thing because they have a different way of thinking about rhythm too. Because they have eight counts, they have uh, choreography, like when they move and the measure, like wait, wait a little bit on this eight count. And I always found it really strange that we don't have this common language with dancers because we're dealing with the same thing, like moving, right. moving in time, yes. playing in time. Yeah. But we speak a very different kind of. It's just not the same, like. Language? Too. Language, yeah, it's, it's a different thing. But I always found that strange because at the core of it, we're moving our bodies in time. We're just doing it to produce musical sounds and they're doing it because it's a dance. But um, I just thought that it was always an interesting thing that dancers and musicians never like spoke that same rhythmic That's right. language. <laughs> it's also very hard to play and dance at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You, well, okay. But I, it's pretty cool. I got the two step down. Like, do you have? Oh, I don't have the strap. Yeah, strap. okay, we can do the, <laughs> do the like dance CSI. Yes, but yeah, I got that down. That's yeah. And then backwards. Do you know this one? Oh god, that that's a dance. That's too advanced. <laughs> I can I can do this one, and I can also um, mm. up and down. I can do that a oh, little yes. bit. Oh yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. So to me, that's what groove, I mean, I, I, I agree with the idea that it's a feeling and it's an embodied feeling. It's really in your, in your body. body yeah. And I mean, f- just speaking for me personally, I haven't, I haven't really connected with that in a while. Um, I haven't really connected with that until recently, I should say. But um, yeah, that's nice. That's my, that's my take. That's what groove is. Thank you very much <laughs> for explaining yeah. what groove is. Thanks for watching. My name is Julia. And my name is Adam Neely. Bye.